Okay. And I just hit record, Melissa. <laughs> so we missed the gata, but we get, we're getting we're getting everything else. Um, yeah, good morning, everybody. It's great to see everybody. Lori's here. Hey, Lori. We're just trying some different framing while we do the talk, and then I'll reframe it to include the one who should be included or who shall be included um, all the time. How, how many of you were able to or, or had a chance to open the newsletter this week and read the uh, story there? Does it resonate with anyone? I've got a laugh from somebody. <laughs> Somebody's chuckling. <laughs> uh, Jeff, you're in a relationship. Yeah, anything ring true there for you? Uh, I'm reading it right now. Okay. <laughs> Philip, Philip, how about you? Uh, yes, definitely. All the time, every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a wonderful and amazing little moment with my uh, friend Frank who I've known forever and been um, you know surfing in Mexico and all kinds of different adventures to have this person that knows me so well express genuine surprise that you know Lori and I would fight or have an argument and and I, I was really kind of stunned and you know, Frank and I have a very sarcastic relationship back. So first I thought he was just being a sar you know, being sarcastic like we normally are with each other, but. Sarcastic doesn't go anywhere near how you guys are with each other. It's unbelievable. I feel like they're insulting each other all the time and I'm always wanting to save them both from the insults. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, and Laurie's always right. Um, anyway, uh, but you know, he, he was actually he was actually genuine in that, and and it revealed for me some of the um, barriers, you know, between us and the the rest of the world, or hurdles would probably be a better word, as we. Um, take the Dharma out into the world as, as we just live in the world, you know, because to the extent anybody is perceiving a level of perfection that is beyond being human, like that's, that's insurmountable in a way, you know? I mean, we, we actually need people to, to see us, feel us, hear us, you know, <laughs> receive and maintain us as, um, the 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 really kind of down and dirty, flawed up, making mistakes people that we all are, because that's life. And and that actually is where the practice, the rubber of the practice, meets the road, right? Is in the, is is in that friction, you know, in in our relationships with the people closest to us. Um, in, in our relationships with the driver on the road that cuts us off, right? You know, how we relate to our own anger and ignorance and hatred and, and love and passion and joy. It's like, how, how do we relate to that and how we are able to or not able to relate that to other people, right? Um, you know, that manifests itself in how those relationships with the rest of the world are, how uh, frictionless they are, or how full of friction. It manifests itself in the number of people on the screen or in, in the Zendo. And so it was, it was a wonderful little moment for me. Now, I, and, and I don't, look, I don't go around with Frank or my surfing buddies or my running buddies going, oh, you know, let's do a gata before we surf, you know, I mean, it, but but there can be this assumption. There can be this assumption, especially in the highly secular society we live in right now, the secularized society that anything that smacks of religion or faith or, or 
ritual or ceremony is somehow other and, and separate and not related. And I think it's part of our job to bring this practice into direct relationship with just normal, everyday, ordinary life, right? And, and how we're being. And yes, to do the rituals and the ceremony and to do the chants and to be all in on all of that, right? But not to become dirty Zen, as it's sometimes called, you know, where, where you go around and you're bowing and chanting to everything, you know? And, and pretending that you're separate from it or above it or not subject to it, right? Pretending that you don't get angry, pretending that this relationship between Lori and me or Art and Mars or Jeff and, uh, uh-oh, Catherine? Okay, no, that's not right. Christine. Christine, yes, I got the C right. And I, and I did read it, it's great. Um, you know, that, that any of, that or between tall and me, right? Or between John and Tennessee, you know, even across the little windows in the screen to pretend that that is somehow immune from the forces of humanity um, is what's called dirty Zen, right? To be so Zen that it's kind of filthy. I wanted to look at case 19 in the Mumun Khan and, and relate it to this. It's a beautiful koan. Ordinary mind is the way I think we've, we've touched on parts of it in the past. Ordinary mind is the way. The case is Joshu earnestly asked Nansen, what is the way? Nansen answered, the ordinary mind is the way. Joshu asked, should I direct myself toward it or not? Nansen said, if you try to turn toward it, you go against it. Joshu asked, if I do not try to turn toward it, how can I know that it is the way? Nansen answered, the way does not belong to knowing or not knowing. Knowing is delusion. Not knowing is blank consciousness. When you have really reached the true way beyond all doubt, you will find it as vast and boundless as the great empty firmament. How can it be talked about on a level of right and wrong? At these words, Joshu was suddenly enlightened. So a wonderful koan, a little bit long when you have to memorize the whole thing, but um, wonderful koan, you know, what is the way? You know, the ordinary mind is the way. Should I turn toward it? Well, if you turn toward it, you're turning against it. Well, if I don't turn toward it, how do I know it's there? Well, the way is not about knowing and it's not about not knowing. How can it be judged on right and wrong? And when you penetrate it, beyond all doubt, it's as vast and boundless as a great empty firmament, right? So what, what does this mean, ordinary life is the way, right? What, what does this mean? Uh, Tennessee, I think you'll, you'll like this. This koan actually is, is centered on the Chinese character for Tao, right? Which is the way, essentially. In, in Japanese, there's two interpretations of that. One is Mishi and the other is Do. Now, Mishi is the relative way, okay? So that, this is the way as in a path, a road, a course, right? So the Mishi is, I walk from here to there. It's the road that the truck drives on. It's the rat running along the top of the wall. It's, it's that relative word, way, right? The way, the path, the way to get from here to there, whether you're a truck, a human, or a rat, right? Do, on the other hand, is the absolute sense of way. This is the Dharma, the way that is vast and boundless, right? That just exists. 
And this, this is the way that we practice in Zazen. When we're not moving from point A to point B, we're not trying to get to from here to there, or at least we're not supposed to be trying to get from here to there in Zazen. This Do is that absolute vast and boundless way. And then I, I wrote these down um, because Do is interesting. Uh, and, and this is something I just learned from Yamada Roshi's commentary on this. Do comes up over and over again. Ken, I think you'll like this, right? We, we know Do in different words. There's Kendo, the way of swordsmanship. Kyodo is the way of archery. Shodo is calligraphy, the way of calligraphy. Sado, the way of tea ceremony. Kado, flowers, the way of flowers. And then Akido and Judo. These are all the way of flowers, the way of swordsmanship, the way of calligraphy, the way of tea, right? Zendo, the way of Zen. And the Zendo, of course, is the room in which we all sit and practice Zazen. Now, we're not moving from point A to point B when we're sitting Zazen. So that's truly that absolute sense of the way of Zen, Zazen. Yamada Roshi was also a, a businessman. He was a hospital healthcare administrator um, before receiving Dharma transmission, uh, I believe from Yasutani Roshi. And so he had a, a math and, and business background. And I think this is one reason this resonates with me. If you read Yamada Roshi's um, version of the koans in the Mumin Khan, he uses a um, device over and over and over. And he talks about the fraction, okay, a mathematical fraction. So as you know, a fraction has an upper part and a bottom part. The upper part's the numerator, right? How much, right? And the bottom part is the denominator or the divisor. And the device that Yamada uses over and over and over when you're studying and reading his commentary is that the numerator is anything. The numerator is our life. It's our practice. It's our work. It's our relationship. It's our Zen practice. It's the sky, the earth, whatever. The denominator is the absolute way or this Do. Now, those of you know math at all, right? What happens when you divide anything by zero? What do you get? You get infinity, right? Divide anything by zero, you get infinity. So if the absolute way is this vast, empty, boundless space that has no shape, no form, right? Emptiness, empty of all meaning, the dough. If that is always our denominator, it turns anything and everything into infinity, infinite space, vast, boundless experience and joy. And that is the point of our practice to put this dough firmly in the denominator. And when we're having an argument about a zucchini plant to somehow try to recover that dough and go, oh yeah, it belongs in the denominator. The zucchini and whatever that is, is the numerator of my life at this moment. But if I can reclaim that zero, that emptiness, ever so little, then it all blows open into enlightenment. And what some people would call nirvana, or can you can reclaim joy, or in your relationship, reclaim love. Right? And it takes practice. Both of the characters in this koan, Nansen and Joshu, um, lived in China in the, they spanned the 8th and ninth centuries. They, they spanned that divide. So we're going way back 
right, into 8th and 9th century China. Both of them are reputed to have had their first enlightenment experience when they were like 18 years old. Young, you know, 18 years old, they had that Kensho moment, that glimpse of what happens when you divide by zero. And they kept training and training and training. And as it is told, each of them came into their prime as a practitioner, as a teacher in their 50s. In their 50s. So boom, I see it. Enlightenment, nirvana at like 18 years of age. But they weren't considered mature in their practice by their teachers for another 30 something years of practice. And why? Because the numerator always comes back, right? Our life always comes back. You know, what is the way? The ordinary mind is the way, right? What is the way? The ordinary mind is the way. And when we, when we put that dough, that zero in the numerator, then all of a sudden, right? It starts looking like this, sitting down, getting up, laughing, crying, eating, you know, going to the bathroom, driving the car, the flower on the deck, the flag in the wind, the person cutting us off in traffic, anger, joy, you know, the beach, the asphalt, the sky, the trash, taking out the trash, you know, dropping your ear pod in the toilet on an airplane and having to dig it out and then wonder if you should put it back in your ear ever again in your life, right? All of it is the way. And if you think about that, right, you really start taking that in. If it's all the way, is there any escaping the way? Breathing, walking, listening to a Dharma talk, being on Zoom, not being on Zoom. What else is there? Try taking it away. I dare you, try taking it away. Take any of it away. Where's the way? Other than the course of our lives. So here's another fun little exercise, right? Ordinary mind is the way. Why mind, Yamada asks. Why mind? Why not just say ordinary is the way? Has anybody ever tried to find your mind? Can you find your mind? Show, your, show me your mind, right? There's a number of koans on this. Show me your mind. Where's your mind? What, you know, I mean, the funny story about Yoshin Roshi when a member of our Sangha had a stroke and um, Kurt Wartman and um, has never fully recovered from that stroke and he's a great drummer. And, um, but uh, Yoshin was in with the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The brain surgeon, right? The brain surgeon. And um, Yoshin being Yoshin said to the brain surgeon, when you were in there working on Kurt's brain, did you find Kurt? You know, and the surgeon looked at him like he was crazy, right? But where, where is your mind? So ordinary mind is the way. So take mind out of that. So now we've got ordinary is the way, right? Those of you that have been working with this for a while, what is ordinary? What's the difference between ordinary and extraordinary, right? Now we're back in words and concepts. So let's take ordinary and throw it away. And now we've got is the way, right? Is the way is the way, is the way, right? But what about the way? Aren't we objectifying something? Isn't there separation in that, the way? Well, so let's take the out, is way. But wait a minute, way is still a label for something else, something out there. So let's take way out. 
Okay, we is gone, and now all we've got is is. Now sit with that for a bit. Tennessee, this is like moo. Right? Is, 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 is. Is, 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 is not, is, is, is not, is, is not, is, 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 is. What happens if you sit with your name, Melissa, 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 tall, is, is, John? All of a sudden it has no meaning. There is no is, there is no is not, there is no Melissa, there is no Philip. And we've got zero as a denominator, and we just blasted through. And when we blast through, there's the verse, the spring flowers, the moon in autumn, the cool breezes of summer, the winter's snow. If idle concerns do not cloud the mind, this is a person's happiest season. Questions, comments, that's it. I, I have a question. So, I, so I've, heard, I've heard this term, everything, nothing, in the work I've done. And it, and it, sounds, it sounds like it's in this realm. Like, and oftentimes, it's, I can e either exist or it doesn't exist. It's one way to distinguish something is what's not. Is, is that, is that in this realm, everything, nothing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and if you deconstruct that a little bit, it's everything, no thing. We, we often think of nothing, but don't get the no thing in nothing. Hmm. If you start sitting with it, John, and start throwing labels away and just sit with the experience, then I know it's, it sounds very Zen, but you actually can experience that everything is no thing and no thing is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's exactly that, that same realm. And, and I know you're in the world of software, right? You know, so the uh, dividing by zero should help. Yeah. That, 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 that points to something really. Yeah. 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 It's experience. It's an experience that's pointed to. Yeah. And we spend all of our time, you know, on the numerator generally. More, better, different. More of this, different of that. Right. We spend a lot of time on the numerator. If only I had this. If only I had that. Look at look at the experience of a lot of people on lockdown. Right. This sucks. You know, it's a very big numerator. And nothing, there's a lot of nothing goes into something. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you're there. Anybody else? Jeff? Well, I saw Art's hand go up at some point. Oh, so good. I was curious what Art was going to ask. Or oh, that's good. Today. I was just going to tell you that doe is a deer, a female. <laughs> <laughs> a deer, a female deer. <laughs> I'm so terrified of singing, Jeff. <laughs> You're pretty good. That was pretty good. You got some yeah. nice vibrato. I don't know. Don't be terrified. <laughs> also, I, I do want to know what happened to the zucchini plant. What was the end result? Did you, did you kill the zucchini plant? 
Did you eat the zucchini? You know, it's, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a funny thing. The zucchini plant is still there and it's doing okay. Um, it, was a, uh, it was a client concern and this happens to be a garden that I'm involved with, feeling very uh, possessive of. And, and Lori suggested perhaps a different way to look at training the zucchini plant. I'm like, no effing way. I know what to do with the zucchini plant. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, but the zucchini plant is still growing and producing zucchini just on its merry way, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a doe, a deer. Yes. Doe starts so baby. So Tennessee go and... Sorry, the, the uh, audio is weird. Yeah, if you could mute yourself when you're not speaking, it, it helps. Um, yeah, no, this is very subjective reference, so I apologize, but I'm learning a new music software, Jeff, you might relate, and it's, there's, you know, there's the sequencer, which is like written music, and then there's like the live set, and, you know, the live set is just as it's happening, and once you start recording, that becomes the sequencer, but life, you can't, life isn't like that, like life is always the live set, life is always more than the sequencer so a night a, a written piece of music is beautiful you know but that's not life yeah. so i mean i don't know if that if that's just what i kept on thinking about sorry very subjective that's where my brain is this, this makes sense yeah And then the making of the music is also the is also the way, right? Right, right. Writing the music, it's really interesting. <clears throat> so, so where is the way, Ken? Where's the way? You're doing it, Jiro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe Ken can't hear us, or the connection's bad. But I, I have an observation. When, when you mentioned there's the way, I started listening. <laughs> like to understand the way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and here we are, John, right? What, what are we doing? But we're exploring the way, right? You know, and, and this, this is one of the great conundrums and beauties, uh, beauty of Zen in particular is. In, a, in the purest sense, we don't need any of this, right? You don't need me, you don't need Lori, we don't need a Zendo, right? Because we're all walking on the path, right? But then the damn zucchini plant gets in the way, right? And so we come together to practice, to start over to zero, it start over at one in our breathing or to remind ourselves that there is a denominator. Mm. Right? Mm. But um, you know, you'll you'll find that Zen teachers are are fond of saying, "I have nothing to give you," you know, and, and yet here we are in robes and doing Dharma talks and holding interview and and working through the koans together, right? And and, and both things are true. Drive some people crazy and right out the door, and and for. Others, it's it's a, it's great fun and a great mystery to penetrate. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat that? Can you repeat I'm sorry, Ken. We're having trouble with bandwidth. Why don't you start turning off your video and see if I? Yeah, I'm having a problem with my. Yeah. Okay, we can hear you now, Ken, because I turned off your video. Ken? Ken? Talk. He's on a deep sea dive. Yeah. He could also uh, comment in the yeah. comments. Yeah. You type yeah. it. Chat. <laughs> so, Philip? Um, 
Yeah, thank you for the Dharma talk. Um, I, uh, yeah, a number of things. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, Jack Cornfield's book, After the Ecstasy, The Laundry. And, it, and uh, like he, uh, I really enjoyed that book. And it, he has a thing that he writes in there that I really liked. Um, uh, it's something like, don't don't look at the Zen teachers. Uh, uh, don't listen to the Zen what, what teachers. That now? Uh, see how look at how he treats his wife. <laughs> <laughs> and and for me that is, you know, that's really why. Uh, I, I, well, I turned off my video, but I, I'm <laughs> still being heard. Hello. It can. Nothing? Can hang on one second. I, I'm trying. <laughs> I am talking. <laughs> hang on one second. Let me try that again. I, I am talking. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Ken, give us a second. Uh, Philip was finishing a thought, and then we'll come back to you. <laughs> Philip? Yeah. Well, this is like a beautiful moment of the Dharma, really, is all the stuff with like, you know, the ordinary mind right now is what do you do when you have a problem with Zoom and you have a problem with someone with like Ken's trying to talk and it's like, that's really the practice. That's the real <laughs> practice is what we're doing right exactly. now. And uh, like that, that for me is, 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 uh, Yes, can I be heard now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. I, Philip, mute yourself. I'm muting you. Okay, go, Ken. Ken. Um, hello, can I be heard? Yes. Yes. Oh, I, I can be heard. Yes. I've been having a problem with the transmission in, in my various Zoom uh, 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 classes, uh, not only with with us here uh, in Zazen, but also with my yoga uh, group meetings. Yeah. You know, my, my screen for some reason constantly freezes and people start making fun of how I froze on the screen and, you know, I can't, um, I don't know what, what's going on. But anyway, Dan, um, this concept of the way has been absolutely driven home for me anyway. Uh, in this, in this, the last three months, because we all have our ways, the way, the way we work, the way we drive, the way we do things. And all of a sudden that has changed for me, absolutely. There is nothing in my life that has not changed. Everything is different. And Speaking of mind, I'm trying to wrap my mind around that. What does this mean? How is this sitting on my cushion relevant to me? How is my yoga relevant to me? How is my not being able to run relevant to me? And everything has started to revolve around relevancy. What is real? This is where I am at. Because this last three months has absolutely put at the forefront for me the existential question. And you brought it up today, Dan. It is. Is. What is? What is it that I am to do now? What was it that I was doing then? Is there something to do later? So isness is all of a sudden all that I seem to have. And maybe it's all that I ever will have. So for me, this existentialism goes right to the core. What is the core for me? The core for me is survival. I'm not earning any money at all for the last three months. Zero dollars. What does that mean for me? 
What does it mean for anyone who's lost a job or, or someone close uh, in, in, in the hospital, for instance? Um, we're all looking down the manhole cover. We're all looking down there going, hey, are you okay? <laughs> are you down there? So for me, it is absolutely back to chakra one, two, and three, baby. How am I grounded? And if so, what am I grounded to? Am I secure? And if I feel I am, what is that security? Do I have an identity now that I'm not doing? What is this thing called pursuit of happiness? We always ask ourselves, what is happiness? But we never stop to think about the pursuit. I think our founding fathers played a big trick on us with that tiny little phrase. Because that has dominated not only my life, but I believe all our lives. What are we pursuing here? What am I pursuing when I come to the chapter in the yoga manual about happiness and how to attain it? If the Buddha way is unsurpassable, how can I attain it? And it's for me, it's all about the attainment and this containment. Right? And so, what is it? What is it? So I feel that, yes, the ordinary way is the ordinary mind, is the only way to be. And to be or not to be is the question. It is the existential question. My, my, my yoga teacher, months ago said, you know, I actually didn't expect this, that this is the way it's going to end. And by that he meant not his yoga practice, but what he did for a living. He was a physical therapist. And he said, my office is closed. Uh, the building, I can't go to my building. Wow. I never thought it would end this way. And I thought, wow. <laughs> Because this is where I'm sitting. I'm sitting on exactly that realization. Um, and it's a hard one. Because it is. It is. So I'm having um, to deal with this immense amount of time. But it's always the same time, isn't it? But this immense amount of time sitting with myself, which, yes, we do on occasion, the hour on the mat, the hour doing yoga, the hour running, again, the doing, the doing, the doing. Now I am faced with, and I, I feel we all are, with being, human being, right? Yes. We, we, I have been so engrossed with human doing. But what is it that I'm doing? What is it that I've done? And this is where I have the question of sitting in containment. Is it content? Partly yes, partly no. Partly it's a big puzzle. And I feel that the koan studies and everything that I have done up until this point has been nothing but a big puzzle. Am I to solve it? Is that what my being is all about? Solving this puzzle? I resolve to pursue happiness. How about the one for the puzzle? So yes, for me it's been um, absolutely uh, earth shattering. Uh, the ground is unready. Yes, I, I wrote the way starts at your feet, but boy, it's shaking like crazy. Um, a 
although the way may start at my I feel the ways to look up. <laughs> so up I've been looking a lot, absolutely a lot. And yes, then the the art that people have been putting on their sidewalks, on their fences, on the trees outside their home. I photographed someone had crocheted this unbelievable message on a tree. It stopped me cold. I was I was gone. <laughs> Somebody crocheted a piece of art on a tree. Wow. But I do have the answer, Dan, for your zucchini question, Dan and Laurie. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and I sign out. Thank you for listening. Well, had you unmuted yourself? We're glad you got the transmission working there. Oh, I, I've lost everything. Oh. <laughs> Tell me about it. I'm seeing Zoom on my screen. <coughs> this is Lori's commentary. <sighs> I like it. Hey, Ken, thank you for the Dharma talk. Oh, it wasn't meant to be, and maybe it isn't, but thank you, Dan, for listening. Thank you, all of you, for listening. I'm sure we're all in this together. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think I think we are, um, though with varying perspectives. And, and exactly, you know, and um, I think it's an excellent reminder of the pragmatism required in in the practice as well. And, and that, absolutely, Dad. You are absolutely right about that. You know, and, and um, that the, it's yeah, yeah. I, I really thank you for sharing at the level that you have. You know, because it's one thing. I mean, I was thinking as you were talking. There's there's a lot of different ways to work with it. You know, you know. Um, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is that what I would supposed to do you know I mean there's a lot of subject and object there and so from a you know very Zen absolute point of view we can start deconstructing that and going you know there's there's a lot of story and there's a lot of action in that but at the same time we have to pay bills and we have to feed ourselves and you know the relative wor world is the world we live in mm -hmm. right and um, how do we find peace i mean you're really talking about the numerator right as 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 that numerator gets diminished in in the case that you're talking about as in, income up there gets taken to zero right you know mm -hmm. yes um as different things get diminished or increased right you know we that's that's the world we live in and then the question is how we live with it but i'm but i'm also very aware you go down and, and it's a skid row and go hey you know just put a zero in the denominator and everything <laughs> you know that's, that's that's like absolutely that's ridiculous right mm -hmm. well how about let's start with a numerator called a meal right right you know and um and actually um Tensigen roshi in the book we're studying talked about that right it's, it's sometimes the first thing you got to do is just feed yourself or feed others and not and not mm -hmm. be all zen about things so i mm -hmm. i really can't tell you how grateful i am for your talk thank you dan blew mine out of the water um anybody else comments yeah tennessee um, I just you keep coming back to zero, which is a circle, which is the shape of the world, right? Not a circle, but a sphere, which is infinity, which is, you know, the full circle. Um, and I wanted to read 
with you out of just a little tiny bit um, from a book called The Book of the Way, which is Tao, which I keep coming back to. I, and Zen, when I first started Zen, Zen was an accompaniment to the Tao. And now the Tao is basically a, a poem that I'm reading about Zen. So I keep coming back to it. I just have to read this though. It's, um, look and it can't be seen, listen and it can't be heard, reach and it can't be grasped. Above it isn't bright, below it isn't dark, seamless, unnameable, unnameable, it returns to the realm of nothing. Form that includes all forms, image without an image, subtle beyond all conception. Approach it and there is no beginning, follow it and there is no end. You can't know it, but you can be it, at ease in your own life. Just realize where you come from. This is the essence of wisdom. I just remind, I mean, like this, the whole like, approach it and there is no beginning, follow it and there is no end. Yeah. You know, you can't find it, but you can be it. Yeah. There's, you can't solve the puzzle, but you can beat the puzzle. And, and you know, as you're, as you're reading that, I was thinking of the Dharma talk today, to understand it is not to be understood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can, go ahead, Tim. I was just like, um, forgive me for continuing to bring it back to that, but that's just where my mind goes, because it's just, it's so, it, it just so overlapped. Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, where where does Confucius fit in historically? Filial piety. Yeah, Confucius said the way is at hand, but people are looking for it afar. Farmers are using it every day without being aware of it. Mm. And not be separated from the way, even for an instant. What we can be separated from is not the way. Mm. Um, Absolutely. And and Ken, I know it doesn't pay the rent or put food on the table, but you were just the ultimate ex ultimate example and teacher of isness in your talk, and it was, I think, a great gift to everyone here. to be treasured and um so it may feel like an unsolvable puzzle but as tennessee said maybe you just are the puzzle and maybe there is a puzzle. But you, you did it beautifully you know i mean one could say you just solved the puzzle <laughs> thank you tennessee <laughs> with just the vulnerability thank you what brings us all together, makes it intimate here. Mm -hmm. oh. <clears throat> I can't wait to sit next to you at Yoko G again. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Or, or Amen. here, and here. Yeah. And here, yeah. Or in a park, maybe in a park. <laughs> <laughs> Any old where. Any old place will do. <laughs> um, by, by the way, I, I just since since we're like on uh, you know, the the real and nitty and gritty, right? You know, Ken and anybody else, if you're in economic straits, don't pay the membership dues, right? Do do not rack up credit card fee, you know, uh, debt for the Zen Center, right? Do do what you can when you can. And, and that, that, that applies to everyone, right? Mm. So um, I, I just want to, like, we are here for each other, and we are here for each other's health, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, right? And, and we should not be operating to the detriment of that. On one hand, what Tal said, give till it hurts, right? Because we're, we're <laughs> helping others, mm -hmm. but not... And this is not directed just to you, Ken, this is to everybody, but not to the point where it's doing damage to your well-being in any way. Okay? 
So, and, and, and when you're inviting people, make sure that that is clear too, right? Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. It's not I vow to take their money. <laughs> okay? And, and with the funds that we've all contributed, we just uh, sent a, a donation up to Yokoji because they haven't been able to run any programs or have any revenue. Mm -hmm. should, yeah, that, was, that was great. I actually should read the thank you note, but I can't find it. Um, but they, they are getting ready to kick off their spring fundraiser up there. And they said, so ours came in as the first contribution. They viewed it as extremely generous and asked me to pass their sincere thanks along to everyone. Beautiful. Right? Uh, Dan, Laurie, and the rest of my, my sangha, I have to uh, log out because I have to zoom into another meeting. But it was wonderful sitting with all of you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ken. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's the way you do it, folks. You know what, what Ken just did? He just stepped right out onto the plank and stepped right off the end of it. <laughs> and then he dropped the mic and took off. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, anything else before we um, close? Anybody tall, are you okay? Good. Marsh? I'm good, I'm good, thanks. Okay. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you. For, for being exactly who you are. Okay, four vows. Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. Desire is inexhaustible. I vow to put an end to them. The dharmas are boundless. I vow to master them. The Buddha way is unsurpassable. I vow to attain it. Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. Desires are inexhaustible. I vow to put an end to them. The dharmas are beautiful. I vow to master them. The Buddha way is unsurpassable. I vow to, to attain it. Sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. Deeds are inexhaustible. I vow to put an end to them. The are boundless. I vow to master them. The Buddha way is unsurpassable. I vow to attain it. See you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.